Right, so this portfolio update is going to be a little different. I will rattle through the usual stuff that I do in terms of my prior performances, as well as my top winners and losers, but I'm not going to go into depth as to what caused those movements. Instead, I just want to spend some time in this video talking about the forthcoming US presidential elections and how, or if rather, they will significantly change the performance of the market. Now, I know I'm not a US citizen, so it's kind of like, what does this guy know about our country and our political culture? Being that it is the largest economy in the world, although I think for not much longer, I feel obliged to know what kind of impact a new president may have to the US stock market and possibly the world. And in addition to this, my portfolio is mostly US based too, so. Anyway, let me transit to my pies. Um, so as you can see, we're sitting pretty comfortably right now. I got rid of a few dividend stocks as well as my Vanguard High Yield Dividend ETF. The reason for this is because I want my dividend pie to have an average yield of at least 4% right. So what's the point in investing in a dividend ETF that yields about 3.3% when I could be getting better capital gains as well as dividends if I just put all that money into my pie. I know that the ETF is diversified but I believe I've picked good enough dividend stocks to retain for a long period of time. So I got rid of some stocks that I over diversified my pie with and will transfer that money that I've used for my dividend ETF into my pies very soon. And yeah, that's that. If you wish to take a look at my pies, you can find the links to them in the description. If we come on to my biggest winners this week, we have Beyond Meat after some bullish calls. You also have Roku, which also rose after positive analyst remarks. And we also have iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, which is incredibly overbought right now. Moving on to my top losers, we have City of London Investment Group that just had their ex-dividend date passed. And we also have Teladoc. Anyways, now that's done, let's get into the meat of this video and why I believe there is absolutely no need to be fearful about who will be in the White House for the next four years. If you've not noticed, there is a presidential election that's about to take place that will decide who will be in charge of the so-called land of the free within the upcoming months. And it's a battle between two parties. On one side, we have Joe Biden, who is a member of the Democratic Party, and on the other side, we have the current president, Trump. A Republican aiming to get re-elected into a second term. Usually around this time the general media begins their barrage of fearful messaging claiming that oh this is the most important election of a lifetime. Everything can change after this election. We've never seen two parties polarised like this before. It's crazy. If any of you have watched Hamilton you know that this is nothing compared to what man were doing back in the day. And then above all of this there are people trying to forecast how the market is going to respond and telling people to reformat their portfolio based on who's in charge. I'm going to say this, I'm not advising anyone to do anything, but as an investor, the time period that you're holding your stock for should not be anywhere near six weeks or even two months in fact. That's not investing, that's trading. That sounded like I was giving an advert there. But I was just trying to say that, you know, if you're investing, you should be holding for a long period of time. Okay, so now that's been laid out, let's take a look at what happened to the market when Trump was elected around November 2016 people were saying that the market would crash. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking at the graph here, glasses on and everything, and I don't see the market crashing. Of course, a couple of years later, we had the whole COVID situation, but that wasn't directly caused by Trump. You know what? Maybe we need to go back to the previous president, Obama, from an opposing party to Trump's that is kind of known for being less economically friendly. Unfortunately for him, he had to deal a little bit with the financial crisis, once again, not something that he directly caused. And even for his re-election, people said that the market would crash. Like, am I, am I missing something here? Like, do I, what, what? I, I mean, I can see a few dips here and there, but not any to warrant the terminology of a crash. Now we can keep going back even further, but I'm not going to. The point I'm trying to make here is that the idea that a single person dominates the behavior of 7.8 billion people, or if we're just strictly talking about the US, 330 million people is just not right and it seems as if there are a lot of people who believe this and if my word is not good for it how about my best friend Mr Buffett who once said if you mix politics with investing you're making a big mistake let's take a look at this infographic real quick it's from a document that Investco made titled 10 truths no matter who wins I'm not going to go through all the points that they've made but I will leave a link to the document in the description so this graph shows the presidential term stock market returns versus economic growth from 1957 to around June of this year. So obviously it doesn't take into consideration the gains that we've experienced recently. We can see that generally 
there is an even spread of performance. There is nothing screaming out from this that shows how one president's affiliation with one party benefits the stock market in a superior way to their rival. I believe that the timing of their presidential run was a more deciding factor as to how well the market and economy did. George Bush was incredibly unlucky to catch 9-11 the 2008 financial crisis as well as the tech stock decline. Whilst Nixon and Carter were in power during a period where there were global inflation worries. So whichever way you look at it, no one party significantly trumps the other when it comes to the stock market performance. Like I mentioned previously, there will be people preaching and telling others to reformat or rebalance their portfolio based on who's in office. But history tells us that you really shouldn't. It turns out that the best performing portfolio over the last 120 years was one that remained fully invested in the market through the reign of both parties. Now, I personally don't know anyone over the age of 120 years old, so looking at this graph can be seen as pointless, but whichever way you look at it, a fully invested bipartisan investor over a decent period of time outperforms a partisan designed portfolio. And it's not even by a small amount. As you can see on the graph, it's by millions and millions of dollars. So you can miss me with all of that nonsense talking about this party or that party will crash the market. I'd rather stick to the trend that we've been seeing for the past 100 years or so. And even though activities of past performances don't accurately predict future events, I think anyone with common sense will agree that the market in the long run will continue to go up. I mean, we've, well, not me, but mankind has been through countless wars financial recessions and a depression and yet the market continues to rise that common sense comment was a bit aggressive actually I, I, I don't I don't take it back but I've acknowledged that it's aggressive but it's true though right I've been an investor in the stock market since late February of this year right one week just before the market crashed to be precise and one of the things I quickly learned about it is that there are a lot of in the market and I used to be one of them let me not lie People are too quick to react on news even if it may not be all that bad. For example, just recently with Tesla when they had their battery day, the information that they released was promising but the catch was that it wasn't something that would be completed within the next couple of months. It was planned that we were going to see the benefits of this over the next couple of years and somehow that signalled a sell off in the stock because some people were too emotional about the long term aspects of things. This is the same thing that will happen with this election. I'm not going to disrespect anyone by assuming every single investor is over emotional when erratic headlines try to predict the end of the stock market, but the aim of these media outlets is to sell their product, so they need eye catching headlines. At the end of the day, persuasion wins elections, not facts. I can make you believe that I can end world hunger by popping a text to Jeff Bezos and asking him to drop me a light at $5 billion, and when I come into your office I'm not going to do sh but if I can persuade you to believe my BS, I win. What I'm trying to say is this. And this kind of applies to all countries, not just the United States. Do not be fooled into thinking any one candidate will make you money based on the party's history or what they've said. Vote for them based on their alignment of views with yours. Because as history shows us, as long as you keep investing, it doesn't really matter who's in charge. The US president isn't the stock market. And on that note, I'm going to shut my mouth and end the video there before I start rambling even further. And I will catch you in the next one in a bit.